Raghavan, you wanted to say something? It's your microphone. Uh, maybe we could wait for a couple of minutes if it's okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, go, let's go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you all, and uh, it's it gives me great pleasure to introduce Safdar Gudus uh, from IAC Bangalore. He his research focuses on non-commutative geometry, and today he'll be talking on group actions in uh, non-commutative geometry. So, Safdar, please go ahead. Yeah, you can present. Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, welcome to this talk. So, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, to have uh, uh, been invited uh, to give a talk, present a talk. So, I'll be sharing the screen. So uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, fine. So uh, okay. So welcome. Uh, so I'll be talking on uh, group actions in a uh, non-commutative geometry. So basically, uh, we'll be talking how group actions uh, change changes the geometry of a non-commutative space, and uh, also the tools that are involved therein. Um, so firstly, we'll uh, give a small uh, introduction or motivation to a non-commutative geometry. So uh, this is, uh, I mean, there are different kinds of non-commutative geometry now, but I'm just uh, giving motivation to the differential geometry, how it came into existence. Um, uh, so the motivation is basically based on the gilfan nama construction, which says that uh, any commutative C star algebra um, is basically uh, represented by uh, uh, a locally compact house space. So this is the gilfan nama uh, uh, construction. And, uh, uh, this uh, basically uh, given us uh, given a C star algebra, commutative C star algebra. We look at the spectrum, this set of spectrum, and there is a topology. Um, on the other hand, given a topological space, we look at the um, continuous function. Uh, so, uh, in this in the spirit of this uh, theorem, what we we may ask that uh, what about the dual space uh, corresponding to the non-commutative C star algebra? So basically. This is a subalgebra of a bond of a bond uh, of bond of Richards on bond Hilbert space. So, so that is known. But uh, exactly how does it look like, and does it represent a kind of non-commutative non-commutative space? Um, so we 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 would like we'd like to try to understand that non-commutative space by actually trying to understand this non-commutative C star algebra. So this was the motivation to start up with, and, and that's how uh, we can say uh, this. Uh, that uh, one can introduce oneself uh, to this uh, non-committed to differential geometry. Um, okay, uh, so we have some examples. Um, so firstly, uh, the classical two torus, which is very well known. So we know that the classical two torus uh, is uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, the the plane mod the lattice, and we have the coordinate functions uh, x1, x2, and uh, any smooth function on this. Uh, on this uh, torus uh, can be actually represented uh, this way, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, in terms of the co coordinate functions e to the power two pi i x one and e to the power two pi x i x two. Um, so we also should have um, uh, this uh, the, the coefficients decaying. Sorry. Yeah. So we also should have uh, uh, the coefficients decaying. Sorry. Okay. 
yeah so this uh, coefficient should decay uh, and uh, uh, it should decay uh, as a, a more than polynomial uh, uh, rate and uh, this is the ex expression uh, which is very well known um, so uh, this is the classical two torus and uh, how uh, a smooth function on it is, uh, uh, is uh, represented um, we'd like to naively you know uh, non commuted non commutativeize it uh, to a smooth function on some non commutative torus. Obviously, it's a one way to understand it. Uh, so basically, what we are asking now uh, is that uh, this uh, um, these two these two um, generators u1 and u2 not they do not commute, but instead they depend on some parameter, which is e to the power two pi i theta. And uh, uh, on the other hand, if we look at uh, you know uh, how this uh, should uh, change. Uh, the uh, the background lattice structure so basically it will say that you know now we, we should have uh, something like uh, x plus y on the lattice as you know, something like theta uh, plus uh, y plus x so this uh, the lattice the background lattice is also now skewed and uh, we can uh, we can look at the algebra itself so this is uh, now uh, not commuting uh, with its uh, generators and we can make it into star algebra okay um, so with this uh, star operation, so we get a C star, we, we get a star algebra, we get a C star algebra norm, and we can look at uh, this algebra, co the completion of this algebra under this norm. Um, uh, uh, so, so, so we have a C star algebra, and this A, a theta infinity is a pre-C star algebra, which is not complete, but dense. And uh, it's... Uh, uh, it's very well known that uh, C star algebras in itself, uh, uh, they, done, they are not interesting uh, as per their K, K theory. Uh, in fact, uh, those are vanishing. So uh, we shall be considering this pre-C star algebra. And um, technically that can be looked as, uh, you know, um, that can be looked as uh, the, the, the algebra of smooth function on the uh, non-commutative uh, torus. Okay. Mm, so, 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 this is a, a kind of one generalization. There are many ways to uh, come to this non commutative torus, but this is a naive way to start. Um, and uh, we, we also have uh, something called uh, the algebraic non commutative torus, which is, uh, uh, which is a set of all such, uh, which is a sub algebra being finely supported uh, on the lattice. And this is also known as sometimes as in literature as quantum algebra. And this is the notation sometimes and multiplicative Weyl algebra and also quantum symmetric algebra. Uh, so uh, this is also interesting uh, uh, and I'll let you know why because you know, firstly it is in, in, independently studied by algebraized uh, being an algebra which is uh, uh, an associative algebra. Uh, it's also, it also shares the algebraic and cyclic uh, cohomological properties with uh, the smooth algebra. So you know, we had that uh, smooth uh, non commutative torus, uh, but uh, uh, in some sense, uh, this algebraic non commutative torus or the quantum quantum toroid, so this captures all the algebraic and also the cyclic uh, co cycles of um, uh, the uh, of the smooth uh, smooth non non commutative torus, and uh, uh, also uh, this algebraic non commutative torus has been used to study the non commutative theta functions on another kind of non commutative torus. So we have two kinds of torus already. One is the smooth torus, which is A theta infinity. This is algebraic non commutative torus, which is A theta L. And also we have uh, A theta form, which is, um, you, know, uh, form, uh, you know, formal non commutative torus, which is basically one parameter def deformation of the, of the algebra formal functions on, on uh, the uh, uh, classical torus. So um, uh, this, this, uh, uh, this uh, a theta form is actually a, a very interesting object, uh, which uh, is also um, uh, which is also understood as uh, the limit of the uh, limit of the um, uh, compact non commutative compactification of the modelized space of elliptic curves. So this is realized as the limiting point of the compact non commutative a kind of com a kind of different kind of compactification uh, on the uh, modelized space of elliptic curves. And uh, people have been working on to understand the theta functions on the non commutative theta functions on the non commutative uh, uh, non commutative elliptic curve, which is also the uh, as I told uh, you that this is the, also 
the uh, a theta form or the or the one parameter deformation of the formal function form, uh, algebra form formal functions on the torus so anyways a uh, little side uh, this is also an interesting object and so is uh, the smooth functions um, so basically what we are trying to do we are trying to understand um, some of the invariants of uh, these these uh, and these um, these uh, um, algebras and uh, uh, there is there is a very nice uh, correlation obviously when we uh, you know, try to understand it from uh, different perspectives and also when we compare with the results that are already known um, so uh, we have a few um, few um, in uh, uh, no uh, invariants so firstly this is Hochschild homology a very well known uh, invariant uh, so we have uh, uh, so the nth Hochschild homology of an algebra, given any algebra, uh, uh, with coefficients in the by, in an, in in a b, a by module or the algebra by module m is uh, is the nth homology of this chain complex, uh, which is uh, given by this map. So this is basically uh, the bar complex. Uh, uh, no, we are looking at the 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 the, the standard. Uh, bar map and uh, this is the Hochschild homology uh, now we see that the first homology uh, the zeroth homology is a mod the commutator and also the first homology is uh, the the differential the so uh, for when a is uh, unitary and commutative uh, and in general uh, uh, you know this nth Hochschild homology uh, indeed uh, uh, are the n forms on uh, the algebra uh, given when the algebra is smooth, commutative, and a finite type. So finite type means finitely generated. Smooth is again an algebraic property, and commutative is not. so. Okay, so so this means that for special commutative case, in fact, this indeed captures the uh, the the. Uh, uh, the Safdar, uh, can you tell us what a smooth commutative algebra is? I mean, what is what what do you mean when you say an algebra is smooth? So we have. Uh, so we have a, a, a short exact sequence which has to be satisfied at each of these uh, maximal ideals, uh, each, each of these prime ideals. So, so there is a definition of, yeah. in, there is an algebraic definition smooth, of being smooth, uh, being smooth. Yeah. Oh, or okay. in other, other sense, uh, the map from A to spec A, uh, spec A to K is uh, uh, smooth. I mean, okay. smooth morphism okay. what we have here. Okay. No, because I was wondering that you define the smooth a theta, right? That is no, no, no. That, those two are two different things, but yeah, okay. uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, Thank you. So, so, so this is the purely algebraic condition, and obviously this is a way to capture the uh, capture the tangent bundle. So we have you know i mod i square in algebraic geometry, which uh, which captures the, uh, uh, the 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 tangent uh, uh, the cotangent bundle at a, a given uh, you know ideal. Okay, oh. and uh, so yeah. And we have exact uh, short exact sequence that has to be satisfied uh, for uh, to be smooth at that. Um, um, so, for example, the okay. prime ideal. Yeah. Okay. So these, these two are two different. No, yeah. Thank yeah. you. So these two are two. Different. Yeah. So so we see that for a special commutative case, indeed, the Hochschild homology is um, is uh, is capturing the differential forms, and uh, uh, we have another variant of this Hochschild homology, which is the cyclic homology. Which is um, which in special case when uh, the ground field K contains the, the rationals uh, can be defined uh, in a simpler way. If not, if that's not the case that uh, the ground field is not containing the rationals, then it has to be defined by the cons uh, uh, by complex capital B and B small b. So these I mean, that's a very complicated, uh, not very complicated obviously. That's a that's a little complicated definition of a cyclic hom homology when the ground field or which the algebra is defined does not contain the rationals. But here, we are assuming and we are working over C, so it's containing the uh, rationals. So in that case, we can use the definition of Hochschild homology to actually define the cyclic homology, okay? And um, that's done by uh, the same complex as before, the same the, the, the same chain, chain complex as before, uh, mod uh, a cyclic operator, which is one minus T. Okay, so this is uh, similar to uh, the definition for a special case when the ground field is containing the rationals is actually uh, giving us um, a similar definition, a similar you know, kind of complex, but actually it turns out not to be, um, but we'll see that later. Um, but um, yeah, for okay, 
So, uh, for example, given if uh, we consider the algebra A as the smooth, uh, the algebra of smooth functions on V, which is uh, a small, V is a manifold, then it turns out that the cyclic homology is actually, uh, you know, can be is actually capturing the Dirac co-cycles on that on that manifold. Um, so basically, uh, we can say the cyclic homology is is kind of capturing the Dirac cohomological aspect of the non-commutative. A manifold associated to a non commutative C star or whatever algebra. Okay, so this is, uh, I mean, just uh, I'll try, I'm trying to justify that these, these uh, Hochschild homology and cyclic homology are indeed generalization to a setting and not just mere, you know, uh, you know uh, a commissioned uh, um, invariance. Okay, um, so we have few results. So, so uh, I'm trying to understand the smooth um, non-commutative torus. So that's done by uh, Refill. So what Refill proved that two algebras a theta infinity and a theta prime infinity are moiety equivalent, which basically means that when someone is when two algebras are moiety equivalent, the K theory is on Hochschild homology, and hence the cyclic homology also. So they are they are isomorphic. So classifying two algebras up to moiety equivalence is also a good way to understand them. Okay. So he understood it as um, so basically they are in the same orbit of the linear transformation action. So that's like fractional. So we have uh, you know um, the map is like this. Uh, so basically theta going to uh, so for g being a b c d theta goes to a theta plus b by c theta plus d. So it's a it's the it's the general you know uh, the kind of uh, uh, fractional linear transformation. Uh, so uh, this is how it's happening. So and the, both of them are uh, moiety equivalent if and only if condition is there. And they also calculated calculated the projections. Um, so this projection is again one is the identity itself, and another there are two projections. One is so say one, and there is another projection which is you know, not the non-trivial projection. Okay, which is basically a smooth projection which they uh, which uh, you know also refill got it and uh, Primson and. Uh, Vojkovsko uh, also about it. So that's a smooth. So this is a smooth projection. Okay. In fact, um, later we'll see that actually k theta of a theta l. So this is actually only z z. Okay. So this is because there's no smooth projection. Okay. So um, so this is what has been studied already, and Cons uh, uh, also studied this, and uh, he calculated the Hochschild cohomology. And in, in his calculation, uh, in his calculation, the Hochschild homologies of these algebras got split up into different um, uh, different cases when theta was satisfying the Diophantine condition, and when theta was not. So when theta was satisfying the Diophantine Diophantine condition, um, the the cohomology groups were were that of the classical you know, torus, considering that there are two one simplexes and one two simplex, uh, so so yeah, so that was the case. And uh, um, when theta does not satisfy the Diophantine condition, then uh, those two cohomology groups were infinite dimension. Um, one thing to note here is, you know, we have this. Uh, uh, sorry, no, I think we should do this. Okay, we have this theta being irrational because if it is rational, that it then um, this uh, a theta infinity for theta being uh, rational is same as, you know, um, the uh, see the, uh, this you know this is um, uh, again uh, uh, similar to this uh, in um, i mean this is actually moiety equivalent so yeah so this is uh, how uh, we are looking at only um, uh, irrationals okay so for irrationals this is how it got split over uh, but it turned out that uh, actually uh, uh, the cyclic homology whose definition we we had um, so that was independent of theta. So in spite of have, having a very, very, uh, very uh, no, um, strikingly uh, similar definition for cyclic homology, it turned out that um, actually, actually uh, uh, the cyclic co-cycles were independent of theta uh, in dimensions. Obviously, um, they depended on theta, but the number of cyclic co-cycles was not dependent on the number of Hochschild co-cycles. Um, so uh, this is a phenomenon which was very much, you know, um, calculate uh, calculation wise it was evident, but uh, you know, why th th is this happening uh, was a, a sort of mystery. Not much, but yeah. Um, okay, uh, cons also uh, computed the pairing of uh, computed the pairing of the projections 
of um, uh, of the smooth non commutative torus with uh, um, you know uh, the periodic even uh, periodic uh, periodic uh, cyclic uh, cocycles so this is the uh, this is the uh, pairing also which we had and um, uh, so we have what till now till now we have an understanding of uh, the hoschel uh, and the cyclic uh, co cohomologies of um, the, uh, the non commutative torus and also the pairing which which basically again is an invariant for the, uh, the for the non commutative torus okay so uh, uh, on the other hand if you go to the um, algebraic non commutative torus uh, which is also as i told which is also called as quantum tori a quantum torus so this uh, uh, i mean the projection is just simple which is which is you know uh, which was to be proved, which was done by Mambus, but he also calculated the Hochschild homology, uh, which again Hochschild homology is a little trickier, and uh, but yeah, he got it. And um, uh, recently, you know, uh, Beres, uh, Jeramados, and Shangtang, uh, so they they computed uh, this Picard group. Sorry for that. Uh, Picard group, um, Picard group of this uh, algebraic non-commutative torus, and also showed that like what Riefel did for smooth torus. Uh, the two algebraic non commutative torus are moist equivalent if and only if uh, they are inverse of, I mean, they're the same or inverse of each other. So, uh, so we have kind of so obviously matlab, uh, trying to understand uh, the Picard group again for uh, an associative algebra is, uh, I know, uh, yeah, so it's uh, like invertible modules. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I try to. Uh, generalize it to the setting that I'll be providing for what I did, but uh, um, actually, it's, uh, I mean, from for, from what what I understand, uh, with group actions, calculating Picard group for these associative algebras is is very uh, you know, is is not that um, uh, simpler uh, than what it uh, seems to be perhaps for me. Okay, so so these are the uh, so these are what we have uh, what we had for. Um, the the smooth torus and also for the algebraic uh, torus, uh, so we had that uh, we had the, those two homologies and also we had for the algebraic uh, torus uh, the Picard group. A actually, the Picard group for the smooth torus is also known. Um, that's also in the literature. Um, okay, fine. So what we are trying to what we shall be doing today. I mean, talking today uh, now will be uh, trying to understand the orbifolds. So what are orbifolds? So uh, I should I shall start with the with the classical um, uh, manifolds and then uh, try to uh, we shall try to understand what's a classical orbifold. So orbifolds are basically the generalization of generalization of manifolds, and um, locally uh, I mean so you have a linear action on uh, on up, on the manifold and we have fixed points and that gives rise to orbifolds. For example, we have S two. We look at the rotation. And that rotation uh, fixes, say, any of the any of the hemispheres, so whatever it is. So it gives a teardrop-like structure, and uh, you know uh, that's no longer smooth at, at least at the point um, at, the, at the fixed point. And there may be ramification, and there are ramifications at least for this case it is, and generally it is. So um, so we have different um, you know, homological properties and also differential structure and all our characteristics. Also change so so this is a different kind of uh, space which is not exactly smooth. Um, one more example uh, we have the classical torus, two torus, and uh, we have um, the that that is I mean, that's the plane mod the lattice, and uh, we um, look at the um, uh, finite subgroups of S L two Z acting on uh, the torus. So for example Z two acts on the torus, so that gives again a sphere topologically. And that's uh, with ramification. So, 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 so basically, it's a, it's a different ma it's a different space altogether, which may, which is not smooth. Um, so, so, so it's a, uh, so so we are trying to de we have derived a new space from uh, from an old um, old space which was a manifold, and new space is not. And um, this uh, new space has different properties topologically also, and also it's uh, is projective is projective uh, spaces are orbifolds. Projective no, projective space. Space. no, no, projective spaces are not orbifolds. No? Okay, okay. Okay, 
so um, it uh, we have uh, an action of SL two Z on 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 the non commutative torus, whether it be smooth or algebraic or formal, and that's given by this. Um, in fact, it's not uh, by chance that this uh, this kind of action is coming into existence. Actually, there is an explanation to it, uh, which was uh, which uh, which was done by Sobelman and uh, uh, Wodowski. Um, I mean, they, they actually not gave an explanation, but they said that there could be a probable explanation, and they, I mean, it's not worked out yet, but yeah, that's what uh, is, okay, fine. So, so yeah, so this is, and there exists a, a group action of SL2Z on the torus, and for example, we have, uh, you know, um, um, uh, ZMOD 2 z acting on it, which flips, uh, which inverts the generators, U1 and U2, and we can now talk about, uh, uh, orbifolds, um, uh, the smooth orbifold, and also the algebraic orbifold. So, so this is the technical definition how to calculate, you know, a, a cross product, uh, cross product algebra given a group action. So we have the C star dynamical system, and from that C star dynamical system, we have a rep representation uh, onto some Hilbert space, and then we look at. I mean, we have this. I mean, this uh, uh, we we look at. You know, set, uh, we look at the group algebra and then we look at the completion of the group algebra in, in a certain law and that gives us uh, um, the, 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 uh, the, the cross product algebra. But in the case when we are looking at the algebraic uh, non commutators uh, cross product with a group uh, action, so, so that's just the group algebra with certain, uh, you know, uh, with the general norm, right? So, so that's nothing to talk about uh, regarding the completion. So, so this is how it is and that's, uh, that shares the property. Uh, I mean, that basically, um, uh, you know, says uh, that, that this 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 uh, cross product algebra basically captures the fixed points, and uh, it's rightly uh, to say that this is indeed uh, an, uh, in, indeed understanding the orbifold structure on the algebra. Okay, so 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 what has been done? Uh, so I'll just state the res results. So 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 this is so the the homologies of uh, this group action uh, was uh, has been uh, you know calculated or understood. Uh, so so uh, Julie Bottery she 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 tried to understand this for you know she she tried to understand the zeroth homology, and also uh, Oblomkov he he uh, he gave uh, you know uh, he gave the the case for uh, so what Oblomkov did was he was looking this. Um, algebraic non commutative torus as some kind of double affine Hecke algebra, which obviously I don't have much understanding of. So, yeah, but that's what he was trying to do. And um, yeah, he looked at the Zenmot 2Z action on this uh, algebraic non commutative torus. And he, he gave a partial list of what uh, results we have available now. And uh, this result, uh, this method, which gives a complete understanding, uh, does not involve any of the uh, tools that Julie Bottery or Oblomkov. You know, uh, did uh, an understanding uh, there on uh, computation, and also we have uh, an understanding of the cyclic or the periodic homology, and um, uh, so 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 the periodic homologies are you know they have one more co-cycles than the Hochschild homology, and um, uh, again this is this is expected that for the special case when uh, something like Diophantine condition would hold for a smooth or before uh, this same result, these two same results should hold. Um, but it turns out that the cyclic homology is anyways the same for even for the smooth case. So as I, as I told earlier that even for an algebraic case, um, algebraic case, even for an algebraic case, uh, the um, I mean, even for an algebraic non commutative torus, they actually capture the algebraic as well as the cyclic co-cycles and cyclic cycles of um, the smooth uh, non commutative torus and its orbifolds too. So that's uh, actually a recent work by my advisor Shang Tang and Sai and Chakraborty and Eugene Yao. So they have actually proved that uh, this uh, this group is uh, also um, the same as for the smooth case, so the cyclic one. But the Hochschild um, the Hochschild groups for the for um, for the smooth co smooth case is still unknown. Okay, fine. Um, so again, uh, this is for the cohomology. So we did, uh, we have now an understanding of the cohomology also. I mean, just these are the dimensions and all. Okay. Uh, any questions? I, I I don't know. I mean, I think I'm very uh, fast. I guess right. Any feedback? I don't know. Hello. Uh, the last theorem that you uh, 
uh, said was uh, Hochschild cohomology, right? No, this is Hochschild homology. This first one, right? The first one was Hochschild homology. After that, it is cyclic cohomology. Yeah, this is this is cyclic homology. So, so yeah. So this is yeah. for the for the for the algebraic non-commutative torus uh, orbifolds. But as I told you recently, uh, a work by uh, Shang Tang, Sain Chakraborty, and uh, and um, uh, and Eugene Yao. So they have actually proved that these core cycles are indeed what I have in my um, in this paper. So these core cycles are indeed the uh, these cycles are indeed the cycles for the smooth case as well, smooth orbifolds. I mean, not orbifolds are not smooth, but orbifolds obtained by group actions. If you smooth cross local. product with gamma, also you get the same result. Yeah, for the smooth non non commutative torus also. Okay. Yeah. Is there um, any reason why one should only consider finite subgroups of SL2Z or uh, fixing points? I guess yeah. I mean, if you if you don't, then you know you have a continuum, and that uh, the K theory also vanishes. Okay. So yeah. So if you, I mean, basically, all these formalism is basically you're trying to understand the chern chern cons pairing. I mean, and that's the basic thing what people are trying yeah. to understand. That's like a, a kind of non-commutative uh, Arthur Singer Singer index. I mean, yeah. I mean, so uh, my, my my question is, what happens if I take, for instance, gamma equals the whole SL two Z? We will will I get something uninteresting or? Uh, I don't know about the homology, oh. but the other K theory is going to vanish. Oh, oh, the K theory will vanish, is it? Uh, that's a yeah. Good. For then the pairing will not happen, right? Because we are looking at the pairings of the. So the, the K theory, the K theory will vanish except for finite groups, except for yeah. those. I mean, that's how. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. That's a theorem due to Eckerhoff or who 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 proved that theorem? That. Uh, it's 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 a collaboration, I think, of uh, these. So you see here, uh, this is by Echerov, Luke, Philip, and Walters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you.